Surprise, YouTube! <laughs> yes, that's right. I am back for one more video because there's something awesome in this box here in front of me. So. And I do want to say before I go any further that the particular cool thing that you'll be seeing at the end of this video was sent to me by my friends at Dual Light, which is now a division of Current Lighting. And this particular review, when I get to it, will be completely honest. They did not ask me to film it. But you know what? I want to do it anyway. So we're going to get to that in just a little bit as a uh, voice of the customer proposal as it shall be. And we have to start here with the Presco Light PEX on our journey today. Now, I don't have a definitive timeline on when this exit sign was released, but my best guess is around 1994. I have a PSG for Presco Light from around 1993. And it does include their emergency lighting products, and the PEX is not included in that catalog yet. So that is my best guess, the least of which is because this particular unit has chevrons. And as you well know, if you're an emergency lighting fan, you've been following the industry for any length of time. Those chevrons came as a result of the 1994 NFPA 101 fire code. And everyone slowly but surely except for a few holdouts, uh, went through and they adopted the Chevron requirement. A little later on came a combination version of this particular unit called the PEX-H. And as you very well know, if you're a Presco Light fan, they like to do a lot of things unique to set their exits apart from the competition. And one of those things was this middle bar here on the E. It's slightly raised, and these Chevrons unlike a lot of products in the Presco Light lineup at the time, were pretty chunky compared to the ones you find on the Exit Light unit. But a little bit more uniqueness from the Presco Light side was as opposed to mounting their optics in the center of the unit, I don't know this for sure, but seems to me they took a little bit of inspiration from the E and moved their optics to the bottom of the unit. Now, this particular PEXH unit also had an L variant. This right here in front of you is the PEXL. That means it has LED optics. You could get the super bright optic and you could get a light strip on the bottom as well as at the top of the sign, which gives you a lot more illumination. Because as you can see, I'm shooting this from the side. And while this doesn't look all that bright on camera, it is pretty bright off camera. But the fact that they use the diffuser you can see the texture on it in the light here. The fact that they use the same diffuser in the PEX L as the standard incandescent version really meant that maybe particularly the LEDs weren't designed for it. it wasn't really an optically superior performance wise. So you could offer that super bright option and get a second light engine mounted at the top of the sign, which would do a lot more in the way of brightness. Let's move forward a little bit. The year is 2002, and there's a big shakeup in the lighting industry, kind of similar to what just happened. Hubble Lighting purchased the LCA group, which included Presco Light and Dual Light, and they combined their operations. So this is where you see a lot of Presco Light and Dual Light co-branded products by 2006. Cornerstone Lighting Products was no more. And the PEX HL went on to exist in the dual light lineup. So what happened? Well, it lived for a little while, but the folks at Dual Light must have thought, we need to redesign this unit. Because admittedly at that point, by 2006, the PEX HL looked a little dated. So what did they do? Well, if you come over here and you look at this unit, you'll see exactly what they did. This you'll know very well as the Dual Light HCX. And this particular unit uses the design language from the Presco Light PEX HL, but it also integrates the Dual Light design language. What you see here on the faceplate, this particular font is slightly modified from the version that showed up in 1995 on the Easy Snap and the Excalibur. The middle bar on the E is just a little bit longer. 
the optics at this time also changed. So instead of having kind of a tan look, you get more of a cylindrical type optic. And these would go on to be offered as remotes in the OCR series. Now, what you're seeing here is the same five watt halogen bulb that was used in the LZ and the LT and various other remotes in the dual light lineup. So if you're using these together, you should have optically similar performance. Of course, now, if you order an HCX series, this is a three watt LED optic. So I bet you all are wondering when we revisit this box, what's in it? Well, you can kind of see the label down here, but if you can't, we're gonna go a little further in. It's an exit sign. So we did all that talking about Presco Light, PEX, Dual Light, HCX, to get to this. This is a new product from Dual Light called the EVCHL. This is the high capacity version of the Evolution Combo. And the difference is, this is gonna have some pretty powerful LEDs on it. So what do we have here? We have an EVCHL UGB12 06L. That tells us this has six watt LEDs for a total of 12 watts of capacity. Now the interesting thing about this particular model, you can see right here in this corner, still has the Hubble Bubble on it. Even though I told you at the beginning of the video that Dual Light is a current company now, that is the name of the company, still has the Hubble Bubble on it. Well, this is a very special unit because I have just been informed right before I shot this particular portion of the video that we are about to see a pre-production model of the EVCHL. So pretty much what you are about to see here is history. I've never been, in my knowledge, offered a pre-production model of an emergency lighting unit before. And this is going to be particularly interesting to review because pre-production models often have differences from the actual production model. And that brings up another story before we go any further. And I kind of feel responsible for this product existing. This involves a story from another brand. Um, I don't know how many of you follow me on Instagram, but a couple of years ago, I had myself a run-in with the Lithonia... LHQM LED. Needless to say, that unit and I are not friends. I had my hands on three of them, and they were just abysmal units. Functionally, the interior is the same as those $30 to $40 Jiming combos that you can get pretty much at any big box store. And uh, some of them actually have Lithonia branding as well. Well, those things are plagued with transformer issues. Sometimes the light engines don't work. Sometimes the batteries are DOA. They're just a mess. So I contacted Lithonia and I said, what can you do for me about the LHQM LEDs that I've had that just don't work? I've ha had my hands on three. One of them was brand new in the box. And they kind of responded to me with a script which I thought to myself, probably not an excellent idea to do so, because why do we have exit signs and emergency lighting in the first place? Well, they're to help you get out of a burning building or a building filled with smoke or, you know, to guide your way to a shelter in a severe weather situation, so on and so forth. So they need to work. So the fact that they kind of dismiss the entire issue led me to, uh, let's say, write a pretty scathing review in a certain place, telling them that they needed to invest in the old LHQM, put some optics on it that had some decent performance. And I had recently found out from a real-life rendering that I had done that the optics from the ELM LT are functionally capable inside the old LHQM. Imagine my surprise when a few months later... Lithonia introduced a version of the LHQM, the third generation model, with ELM LT optics. That being said, this particular unit was created by Dual Light as a response to that 
unit. Uh, that would be the LHQM6, I believe is what it's called. Um, and it has LHQM optics that are 6 watts apiece, and they deliver somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 lumens. I believe this one delivers somewhere close to 1,350 lumens at its peak. So that's kind of the story of how I am indirectly responsible for this. And I have said that because I don't know if Lithonia's unit was already in the pipeline when I wrote that review. It could just be a massive coincidence, but the fact that that product exists is the reason why this unit exists. Now, personally, I feel like already out of the box, before I've even touched it, the option set on this unit is better. For one, if you look at Lithonia's unit, you can only get white housing. No black housing, just white housing. So by the fact that a black housing unit is offered, that immediately makes the spec set a little bit better. But there's something else that you can't get on Lithonia's unit, and that is self-diagnostics. On the reintroduction of the third generation LQM with the LMLT optics, you cannot get self-diagnostics. But what's cool about this is you don't have to specify Spectron on this particular unit because it comes with Spectron straight out of the box. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. This is a groundbreaking product. It offers Spectron straight out of the box, included in the price for any spec set that you can order from this particular unit. Now, this particular unit, as well as the Lithonia unit, also have something else in common. You cannot specify remote capability with the optics included. You can only specify remote capability when the optics are not included. So you have to do the zero option for no heads on this unit if you want 12 watts of remote capability. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on using this unit as a combination as well as specking it out with remote capability. You cannot do that at this point. So let's take a look at what we have in the box here. We're flipping the cardboard up, and the first thing we see, obviously, is the exit sign. But we'll start with the accessory package. And here's what I kind of like about this unit. Although I don't know why somebody would, after specking the unit out with the optics, but they include two blinking plates here to just make this an exit only product. Of course, you get your cabling and everything in there, as well as your arrow knockouts. And dual light only includes two, because they assume if you're using this in a dual face configuration, either you're gonna have it pointing in the direction of an exit with no need for both arrows to be obscured, or you're already gonna have both arrows facing out anyway, to point to exits in opposite directions. These are pretty reliable units, and I have not had, in my experience, an EVHC unit fail. And these optics themselves are shared with the EVHC and the Dynamo series. And they've been pretty reliable from what I've seen. And even the three watt models pack a punch. Let's get to the sign itself. Obviously, underneath, you're going to get an extra faceplate and the instruction manual. So taking all this plastic off, one of these optics are popped off on the side. And on the production model of the EVCHL, and it looks like this pre-production also has it, you can do side mounting of these optics. So what they do is they leave one disconnected in case you need to side mount the optic. And it also helps this unit to not be damaged in shipping because if the shipping company would bounce something up against the box, compact the unit together, it could shatter the unit. So it's smart that one of these are disconnected straight out of the box. What I'm not seeing, and I don't think this is offered on the production model, what I'm not seeing is an extra side mounting provision to do this HCX style. And as a matter of fact, 
that optic was very, very easy to snap in. Didn't require much effort at all. So just be very careful and it'll go straight in. I, I have no issues with that particular point. This is a very easy unit to assemble and that's really all you have to do. Before we go inside this unit, I wanna take a look on the outside of it because Spectron was a big selling feature of this unit. And as you can see, they have the Spectron logo proudly displayed on the outside of the unit, which I like. So a lot of the reason why Dual Light has been going away from putting this indicator on the outside of a lot of their units is because if you look at design and the way it's going, this is considered clutter to a lot of designers. But to me, I like this stuff. I like seeing that Spectron logo on the outside of the unit. I like seeing the flash codes on the outside of the unit. To me, that's old school dual light. Um, they used to do that on every one of their units back in the day. Now, we'll bring HCX back in here for a second because you'll notice HCX, the test button is in the center of the unit because that's where all the electronics are. But EVC HL, the test button is all the way to the right because the electronics exist right behind this compartment. Um, and you'll see that when we go on the inside of both signs and kind of do a little bit of a comparison. But first, I want to just take a look at EVC HL by itself. Removing the faceplate, this faceplate is made very well. Um, this feels like a quality piece of equipment in your hands. This is not floppy. I can't get it to bend. Um, can't say that about a lot of modern day emergency lighting products. Um, some of them you can just wave your hand in the air with a faceplate in your hand and it flops back and forth. But this is a solid piece of plastic. The thing that I really don't like about modern units is uh, bleed through the back faceplate. Well, this unit's not going to do that because um, this is nice, thick, quality plastic. And, you know, it's just a carryover from the Presco Light and the HCX. I mean, that's, that's the way this particular lineage of sign has always been, and I would really expect no different. So nothing negative to speak of at this point. Going inside this unit, because it has... 6 watt optics and this is a high capacity version of the of the sign you got to have a pretty big battery to run all this stuff so in addition to your light engine back here which is obscured by bubble wrap keeping your canopy safe and of course the canopy itself this canopy is made well too of course all these are reused from the dual light HCX which I've had plenty of experience with that unit and this is the same quality canopy that you get with your HCX. So very happy that this stuff has not changed. You know, if you have an exit sign in a high abuse area, especially in a school, you know, and I mentioned that in my last review with the EZ2L. In a school, what do kids do? One of the cool things to do is reach up and smack the exit sign. Now, where this one's going to differ is this canopy is strong enough where if someone smacks the exit sign, this is probably going to stay latched. Whereas if it's any other exit sign, if it's one of the El Cheapos, it's going to be dangling from wires. Uh, so that's one reason why I really enjoy these products. Uh, because they are quality made. And even though all the circuitry in here is newer, and from my understanding shared with the Dynamo series, which is also pretty awesome, it's going to be rock solid reliable these things are quality products and they're built well and you can just tell i mean there's heft to this you can tell from the heft of the product that it is built to a quality standard and you know i don't like to be you know hyping this up because you guys think that dual light made me say it they did not i chose to do this myself and um this is the next line in line of a product that I've liked for a long time, and that product itself was good. And, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised at all to see that this one appears to be just as good as well. 
Now, let's kind of take a look in here at your light engine. Your light engine is comprised of four high output LEDs. You know, a lot of exit signs five years in, the light engine depletes because LEDs age. I'd be confident that these would last for a long time. But this, as far as looking at this sign uh, by itself, looks like I'm pretty much ready to wrap that up. Oh, we were gonna look at the label over here. Hubble lighting doesn't exist anymore. So this is gonna be a pretty interesting piece of the collection. And now, why don't we go ahead and look inside the HCX? Because I'm sure you're probably wondering how different is this unit? We're gonna take a look right now. So here's your interior look, HCX versus EVCHL. The next difference, of course, are those optic mounting locations. The HCX kept the bottom mount from the PEXHL, and the EVCHL has the optics mounted on the center of each side of the housing, pretty similar to virtually every other combination unit out there. So doesn't really matter all that much in the grand scheme of things, and I don't even know if it would be possible. But I rendered this thing up HCX style a while back, and I wish that was possible with the real life product. It very well may be, because this is a pre-production model. But maybe you want to make this look like an HCX to move the optics down and be somewhat visually similar to the HCX if you happen to have those in an installation with your EVCHLs. The biggest difference internally are your compartments where all the electronics and your batteries go. The EVCHL only has one battery compartment and the second side of that compartment is shared with the electronics. As you very well know, the HCX had a high capacity option where you could specify two four amp hour six volt batteries one of which would go here, the other of which would go there, and the electronics would reside in the middle. This is kind of a carryover from the Presco light days where the electronics and the PEX would also be mounted in the center of the sign. I bet you've already asked yourself, what's Compton going to do with this particular unit? Well, the answer is out here in my garage, which you have not seen my setup in forever. Unless you follow me on Instagram, in which case you have a few times. So I have these Lithonia LQCs up here. And then I also have some ELM LTs, as well as a third generation LQM. Um, the reason why you have this LQM, as well as the LQCs, it's because I had myself some Emergy Light preceptors, and those were second generation units of that particular model. And they started getting temperamental out here because let me tell you, it gets hot. So these units ended up replacing them, and the ELM LTs replaced some dual light EVHCs that the batteries got used up because of the extreme heat out here. And what I want to do is I want to take the EVCHL, and I want to replace these two units. I want to make one unit serve two purposes. And for that, that unit's going to go up right around where this ELMLT is. So everything will be centered. Now, eventually, I may end up taking the other ELMLTs down because I don't know if you're like me and you don't like it when people install white units in applications with black units or red signs in applications with green signs. But to me, everything should have a visually similar appearance. So I may end up taking the ELMLTs out and just using them as backup units just in case something else fails. But maybe when you come back, you'll see an exit sign up here. And as promised, you are back, and here's an exit sign. I will be using this with the ELM LTs, at least for now, so I have the optics aimed down. However, if we back up and you look over the entire area here, 
This thing does an excellent job of illuminating the egress pathway. So I have no doubt in my mind that this would be an excellent sign for your application because those optics do a fantastic job. And now it's time to wrap things up. So before the sign turns off from its Spectron self-test, I would like to once again thank the fine folks at Dual Light for allowing me to do this review. Once again, just did it on my own. Did not even get asked to do it, but I really wanted to get that done for them because this is an excellent product. And I knew from the second I had my hand on it at the first time that it was gonna be quality knowing my experience with the HCX that came before it. But that is all. And feel free to leave a comment below. And hopefully I will see you again one of these days somewhere down the line. This is my cue to exit. This has been CompDude 512. Thank you for stopping by. Be sure to love each other and take care of yourselves.